Hey everybody, I'm here with the composer for a long weekend, Brian Bassetti. Hello! And we're going to talk about how he composed the score for a long weekend. When I approached Luke, yes, I approached Luke, I saw he was ailing on social media in need of a composer. I said, ooh, ooh, me, me. I actually had you in mind as composer, but, you, you know, with the family and all that, I didn't know if you would have the time to. Um, he actually approached me, and I was quite thankful. We had previously met at a filmmaker's meet-and-greet gathering here in our hometown of Redding, California, and what sold me on his skill was he said, I want to make scores that you can leave the theater humming. Because when was the last time you left the theater humming something? And I'm like, that's the guy I want to work with. It's true. When was the last time you left the theater humming? I mean, there's so little melody these days. It's all texture and rhythm. Bring back melody! And that figures largely into my process. Usually when tunes come to me, I have nothing to write with, so I have to hum. I became the idiot you see walking around humming into his phone and conducting in the air. So right away, it's got to pass the hum test! Then when you were first writing your hummable tunes, you would start with a rough sketch and then later replace that with the final instruments. What does that process look like? It is a nice shortcut. It's a shorthand way of conveying an entire orchestra's worth of information without getting bogged down in who exactly is going to play this. It's just a good way of getting ideas onto the paper and moving on. So then I would play the sketch to Luke and he would say either yay or nay. Once he signed off on the sketch, then I could begin the actual sequencing, which is the really labor-intensive stuff, where I go into my DAW and basically play every instrument in. What kind of instruments did you use for this? Were there any real instruments, or was it all just digital stuff inside the computer? It was all in the computer, all sample libraries or sample modeled, where they take basically the math of how the instrument makes the sound, and through some programming mumbo-jumbo, they come up with an eminently playable instrument that is perfect to use with the musical breathalyzer. Do you have the breathalyzer with you that we I can do. see? I do. This thing's interesting. Uh, it registers how hard you're blowing into it. There's a bite sensor. You can tilt your head while you're wearing it that way and it triggers something. You can tilt your head forward that way and it triggers something. You can really make yourself look very special while using one of these things. So the harder you blow into it, it makes different types of noises, like what a real instrument? Just like a, a wind instrument. The harder you blow, the louder the instrument plays. Were you going for any particular aesthetic with the size of the orchestra? Yes, definitely. Uh, both from an aesthetical point of view, but also a budgetary and time constraint one. Um, because it's a light comedy, you don't have to go quite so big with the orchestra. You can get away with a smaller ensemble of, say, maybe 50 to 60 players. How big would something like Star Wars be? Probably 80 to 100. Probably 150 if you include the choir. But nothing like that here, uh, <laughs> because if we'd done that, I'd probably still be working on it. As it was, it was scored for two flutes, one doubling piccolo, an oboe doubling English horn, two clarinets, one doubling bass clarinet, three bassoons, one doubling contrabassoon, three horns, three trumpets, three trombones, tuba, a bunch of percussion, piano, keyboard, and strings. And yes, that's enough. Altogether, that amounts to about 30 tracks of audio for every cue. So, certainly, hair-pulling amounts of stems to work with. Mm-hmm. He is. How many hours did this take you? Oh, my gosh. It took about three months, the better part of three months. Um, what that translates to in man hours, way more than 100. I'm not surprised. It took me 523 hours to make the whole film. I actually logged every hour I spent making it, and then added it all up. You logged all that? Mm-hmm. You're so much more disciplined than I am. What were some of the things that inspired you in writing the score? Well, I read John Williams' scores in the bathroom, just to clear the air, just to throw that out you, there. You read his scores, like, with notes? Yes. I, this isn't a John Williams score, but... Yeah. I, I, read, I read that like most people read books. <laughs> he reads John on the John. 
<laughs> Why am I, I this way? No, there were some definite musical inspirations, like watching the homework montage, seeing the pacing, just rapid cuts. It First and foremost, it struck me as like a, a cartoon, like a Warner Brothers cartoon. So immediately, I start thinking, oh, Carl Stalling. So Carl Stalling means a lot of chromaticism, a lot of changes in timbre and tone color and instrumentation. So I tried to have the music reflect the pacing. I'm not much of a pianist. I work more from the notation side of things. Cleveland Bonet played my solo piano part for the homework montage. He recorded it in his studio on his keyboard, and then he sent me the MIDI information. MIDI is the global standard for sharing musical data, basically. It records which pitches are being played and for how long or how short and how loud and how soft, and it is a very efficient way of transferring musical data without actually hefting around sound files. So you take the MIDI information that just records how long and how hard each note is played and then plug that back in to whatever instruments you have in the computer. That's right. Could be a piano, pipe organ, harpsichord, anything. What a time to be alive! In the next scene when she's on the phone to her friend about the assignment, that just screamed to me, spy movie or suspense. So lots of ominous things and a big deep drum. There's a scene when the two younger siblings are tearing a room apart. A lot of composers like to do, oh, there are small children, they're, we must use music box. I say, fooey to that. I see children, and I think, a little more devilish, a little more <coughs> impish. Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, it, it was inspired by <laughs> my own little sisters. The, actually, the room you see where they make the mess of their playroom, that is my house. The only set design there was choosing what parts of the mess I didn't want. Perfect. The mess was already there. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful mess. So I scored the kids for a uh, trio of bassoons, which I think is nice and devilish sounding. The next scene, when Mom comes home, I got to do a little bit of Mickey Mousing. I tried not to Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mousing, by the way, is when the music exactly follows the action like a cartoon. Um, but Luke did a shot of the hands of the clock spinning really fast. And I said to myself, oh, I gotta do something with this. So I did the tinkling of the bells and the celeste and all sorts of weird chimey percussion and that was fun. And then there's a scene that we call the laptop heist. How did that come to be? That was, that was the, uh, the second big challenge. That was the second big musical set piece I did after doing the homework montage. And that was tough because initially I wanted to go a little more avant-garde than you were ready for. There were a few times in our first drafts of that that it sounded very, a bit too horror movie-like, and I'm like, yeah, let's just bring it down a little bit more. It more did get a little like. It did get a little horror-ish. And you wisely made me tone it down a little bit. was fun. Lots of tone clusters, an ominous low rolling bass, and really weird gnarly string harmonies. That was great fun. I had a lot of fun doing that one. Both the homework montage and the laptop heist were the two hardest scenes for us to do. Those were the two that we kept working on and revising throughout the entire process. There were like four or five revisions or, so, or something. The next morning when she wakes up, it is 15 seconds of unadulterated panic. There's an anvil in there and forearm clusters on the piano, which is exactly what it sounds like. The pianist actually takes their entire forearm and bangs it on the keys. I can do that. You I'm could. a pianist now. You are. So when she finds out it was President's Day weekend, that was a moment to recapitulate everything. Take the theme that we established in the homework montage and do it a little gentler. It's a much more sparse orchestration, just strings and a few odd woodwinds, and uh, a final sweet retelling of that uh, caperish homework montage theme. This has been an interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Check out Brian Bassetti on SoundCloud. I have the link to his score for Long Weekend in the description of this video. You can find the full short film A Long Weekend on this YouTube channel, for which there is a link in the description. Subscribe! Ring that bell! And I will see you next time. Take care, folks.